Yeah, I saw um, some people have been doing like a multi Dagoon kind of thing. Oh, really? Your father's a bo bodybuilder? That's sick. Respect. Oh, well. Well... Okay, so what's the first count that he probably dies? Does he die right away? Summon the lowest power bronze. No, he's going to go to counter two, right? Boost all allied units in this row by one. Maybe not bad still. And summons a bronze... Um... Death wish? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the follow. You wouldn't want to hurt her, yeah, you? boosted them. Look. Nice. Um, okay, how do we want to go about this, though? <laughs> I saw you ask me that every time. Okay. gets answered quite a fair bit because everyone understands the cards now and what to do about them but can be quite strong if sticks This is here. I guess we let let that do its damage. Hey, what's up legends? Welcome back to another deck guide. Before we get into today's list, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now. My next objective is to reach 10,000 subscribers. And I'd really appreciate your help and support in achieving that goal. For today, I've put together a Deathwish deck utilizing the new card, Dagoon, I think it's pronounced. So the leader ability that we're using is Overwhelming Hunger. With this order, we get to destroy an allied unit, then spawn an Ekimaru in its row, boosted by the destroyed unit's power. We've got two charges with this leader. And just bear in mind that Ekimaru is this three power token unit that you see here. In terms of how to use our leader ability, I like to reserve it for Detlef Higher Vampire. We could completely reserve it for that unit if we like. In other instances, we could also save a leader charge for Bruce Ritual, a combination of these. Bruce Ritual, the goon when he's in his transform stage, Deathwish 8, as you can see there. Once once we reach count of five is also a good option. Urn of Shadows is a stratagem. We get to trigger the Deathwish of an allied unit of our choice. This is when we go first. The reason I have Urn of Shadows in this deck is just to work with Brewer's Ritual. It just helps to thin our deck out and gives us tempo to win round one. So this will be the best target when going first. So what I'm going to do is run you through this list bottom up, explain how best to play each card, when to play it during a match, and then we're going to discuss how to execute strategy for this deck. So to begin with, I have one Drowner in this list. It's a Thrive unit. So as we play units with a higher power than this, it will be boosting itself by one. Deploy, move an enemy unit to the other row, damage it by two. I have Drowner in this deck as a tech against row locked units, but also to improve the value of our Foglets when they're causing fog, just to make their abilities consistent to have a unit to damage on a specific row. And also we can play this with Dagoon, so more units will get damaged by Storm that that unit um, spawns, that row affected spawns on the opponent's side of the board. So that's when we're looking to save this card mainly, to be used at those times. Other than that, we don't really search for it. We've got Squirrel in this list too. 
Squirrel is just for some graveyard control. So on deep play, you get the banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. In particular, I've got this in this list right now to counter Skelliger, Drake, Bondu. You know how they summon a warrior to their... They thin a warrior to their graveyard and they trigger its vet veteran ability, make it grow really tall and then replay it multiple times. So we can time Squirrel against Skelliger. But of course, we could just use this against Echo cards the opponent may have too or any other important units. Double and Drager eggs. Deathwish, spawn three drones in this row. The drones are the token unit that you see there. So with regards to the Deathwish units in this deck, obviously we have Deathwish units to synergize with Haunt. So try to save some at that time. And as far as the bronze Deathwish units go, for the most part, we want to focus on leaving them in deck and letting Brewess Ritual thin them out to the board. I would suggest saving Foglets for Haunt scenario in particular. And the Andrega eggs actually have a really good synergy with Andrega Warrior. We get a bit of extra value if we use Andrega Warrior to consume these. So Andrega Warriors, we have two of these to help with the consuming of our Deathwish units. Deploy, consume your adjacent units. For each consumed Insectoid, gain one charge. So Andrega eggs, Insectoid will get more token value that way. So try to use Andrega Warrior round one when we're playing Brewers Ritual out. I've got a lot of Deathwish units on the board. Nice way to activate multiple Deathwish in the one go. So play them out at that time. We've got Pella as a tech against statuses. So with Pella, you get to purify any unit of your choice. It could be ours or the opponent's. We can use this to remove poison, lock status, or remove the opponent's resilience and defender status if we need to for some reason. Double bridge troll. Deathwish boosts the lowest power allied unit by four. We may wish to activate this after having the token Insectoid spawned on the board. Or when we have the Night Wraith from Haunt Scenario with those lower powered um, rat units that come out as well. Just to distribute the points a bit more effectively and not go too tall into some of our units. Double Foglet. As I said, with the Foglets, try to actually keep them in hand when you find them. So... We don't waste their value with Brewers Ritual. Because if we go first and we hit Brewers Ritual, we may thin Foglets out to the board and then the opponent can kind of play around it. So this is a really good value Deathwish card because you get to spawn Fog on the opposite row for three turns. It does offer us some control, actually. Things to keep in mind is that it's a good way to counter Saskia. You could damage and destroy Saskia with this from Harmony lists. Also really good against Skelliger Wolves if you want to time it that way. But better off to be kept in hand round one. Search for it, save it to be played with Horn. We've got Spores as a control option. Reset the power of a unit. This will be good against Harmony lists at the moment. But can also work good against Skelliger lists when they're boosting their Warriors. And for whatever other else boosts you may run into. Use it as you need. We've got Double Giant Toad. Consume an allied unit. When you play a Deathwish unit on your ranged row, summon self from your graveyard to the same row. Consume it, gain Doom. I like to play both Giant Toads out round one to consume our Deathwish units because they act as carryover cards for the rest of the match for us and just give us a quick and easy activation of our Deathwish units later on. So they basically are two consumes if you want to look at it that way. Double Siren. I've got Siren in here to help with consumes, the activation of Deathwish units. And a good thing is that the Sirens are Deathwish units themselves. So with the order, you get to consume an allied unit, Deathwish, boost adjacent allied units by two. I like to leave the Sirens in deck for Brewers Ritual to thin them out round one. And it's good to bring Sirens out at that time because we're going to have a lot of Deathwish units and we will be needing to have a lot of consumes at that time. Lady of the Lake allows you to play an Echo card from your deck. We have Arendite in this list and a Neuromancy. So you're going to play one of those with Lady of the Lake. Play Lady of the Lake round one. It helps with a few more points to give us tempo and more value with Arendite. We've got Toad Prince for control. Consume a unit with four or less power. I'm running this card as a counter to Enslaved decks that are playing Hefty Helga. Also a good counter to Chameleon from Squaretail list. Those are the main cards that stick out to me at this time, but of course it could work um, in other situations too. Use it as you need to, really. Tr try to save this for more important cards. Also, from Fire Sworn list, could work good on Hebelfart at the moment. Uh, Cave Troll. Cave Troll is a defender unit. So the opponent can't target anything on the same road that Cave Troll is on. 
unless they destroy cave troll and the reason i have cave troll in here is that mainly i have have it for protection for dagoon um so dagoon can reach his counter of five and cave troll is actually nice because it also protects haunt from potential heat wave so definitely a good value unit and i like to play this round two on the bleed Della Fire vampire really high tempo play with leader ability in particular death wish summon this unit from your graveyard to the same row this unit's ability is limited to two uses does not refresh when it leaves battlefield we can save that love high vampire for a short round three play at the end of the match we can activate it through the use of giant toad in graveyard and a combination of our leader or just save leader for it if you'd like even aaron died to help our deck with control i added aaron Dite in this list because we're really high tempo and we like to go first in the rounds and we've got a bleeding emphasis and that works really good for Arondite value, usually that kind of uh, combination. So it's an Echo card, so we get to play it twice. Damage an enemy unit by zero. Boost the lowest powered allied unit by the excess damage dealt. At ev end of your turn, if you have more points than your opponent, increase damage by one, wherever this card is. I'd like to use Arondite. We can use one of the charges round two when bleeding the opponent. And just save the final one for round three to give us something to fall back on to win the match still. Um, after having fought really hard. So we got Brutus Ritual in this deck as well. Deathwish, summon two random bronze Deathwish units from your deck to this row. When we go first, we're going to use Stratagem to activate Brutus Ritual and then consume Brutus Ritual. If the opponent goes first, use a leader charge when you play Brutus Ritual round one. And if the opponent goes first, try to play Brutus Ritual opposite the opponent's units, just in case we draw Foglet to the board. So it's definitely a round one card for us. Aniromancy is an echo card allows us to play any card from our deck and we can play this twice usually you're going to save a neuromancy to find your golds right Bruce ritual round one perhaps something like haunt or cave troll or dagoon round two and then we have dagoon here so dagoon has two forms to it you have dagoon promised which is this what you're looking at here on deploy infuse five units in your deck with death wish boost the lowest powered allied unit by two and worship dagoon and spawn Call of the Depths in your graveyard. So Call of the Depths is this artifact which will appear in the graveyard. After the goon has been worshipped four times, what's meant by worshipped is that, you know those five units you infused? If four of them get destroyed, okay? If the Death Wish is activated on four, then this card's considered worship four times. At that time, what will happen is you get to spawn the goon promised on your melee row and banish self, which is just this card again. So in this stage, the card actually acts as a carryover card. Okay, we'll just summon itself to the board and we have eight point carryover when we've reached that activation. To, personally, for me, I don't like to play it in this stage. I like to play it in the transform stage. Um, also consider the other aspects of this card though before we move on. Order, consume an allied unit. Whenever you play a death wish unit, boost it by one. When in hand or deck, evolve after you win a round. So I like to use this card around two after winning round one. And I like to play this stage, the Goon Risen. Doomed unit, at the end of the turn, increase the counter by one. Okay, so the idea is that we want to float this card behind Cave Troll round two on the bleed right away early on into that round when we're bleeding. And as each turn passes, these counters de develop, right? End, end of the first turn, one. Next turn, two, three. It keeps building up its its counter value as you build up this card's counter value value you get these different effects okay so let's say we build this card's counter value up to five then that means when we activate the death wish for this card we get to trigger abilities up to the counter's value so if we consume this card when it has counter five all that means is that all these different things that you see written here will get activated by then and that's how we want to play this optimally. Okay, so on one, summon the lowest power bronze death wish unit from your grave to this row. Two, boost all allied units in this row by one. Three, spawn storm for two turns, etc. You could read through that. Why is it good to get to counter five? Because basically we get our card back when bleeding the opponent. Look at counter five. It says spawn a base copy of self in your hand, which is pretty nuts. So you could be card down, right? Round two, bleeding the opponent. And then once you hit counter five and you activate death wish you get the card back and it's almost like you won round one against the opponent on even cards it's kind of like siri dash um kind of an idea of what happens 
with this card here to my understanding anyway from what i've experimented with this so uh, just makes bleeding the opponent and death wish even better because that's what we want to do we want to bleed the opponent with death wish and push them hard into round two so it makes it even less riskier for us if we get this card to counter five and um as i said yeah it's going to be cave troll dagoon round two and then we want to bleed with haunt and just play as deep in as possible to get to counter five and you can use a leader charge to activate dagoon at that time and finally we got haunt scenario card progress whenever you play a death wish unit uh so we just get these cards spawned and played out here as you can see we get consumes and we get night wraith what i like to do is play haunt in the same line as dagoon cave troll round two and play night wraith there all in the same row because we've got to remember dagoon one of dagoon's counters boosts all allied units in the same row so that's why we, we want to row stack at that time for dagoon value okay so round two card utilize this then now that i've covered the list let me explain how to execute strategy for this deck so we're a list that's more on the greedy side we're not really a control deck what we want to do for the most part is win round one try to two the opponent or go into a short round three another reason we want to do that why we want to always go first and bleed is because we're playing arandite okay that's what makes arandite play for greater value so what you can do to win round one can be to play Bruce ritual and prioritize setting up your carryover with the giant toads okay use those as consumes round one we can also use andrega warrior round one and that's pretty much what we want to do we want to rely on Bruce ritual our bronze death wish units and our bronze consumes okay it is usually enough to win round one into round two try to tour the opponent you're going to play cave troll cave troll melee play dagoon melee because you don't want to play this range throw in case giant toad comes out and consumes it as a death wish unit okay so cave troll melee dagoon melee play haunt start row stacking your units bleed the opponent with foglets activating haunt Bleed as far into the round as you can until you reach count to five. Activate the goon. If you can tour the opponent, go for it. If not, go into a short round three. In a short round three, you can fall back on Della Five Vampire and Aaron Dite to hopefully win the match and whatever else you got left, of course. So I hope you have fun watching the following matches and thanks a lot for your time and support. Ooh, they spent leader. Then that gave me foglet value. Very interesting. My goodness gracious. I guess we want to use this order right away. Listen, they ain't messing about. They're coming here to destroy me. They're not playing Gwent for fun. It's a profession. All right. They're bleeding me with Calvate. Not to be underestimated. Positively not. Maybe it's better back here. Okay, they did it for me.
don't want to go too tall into one unit. Because they could have some control. How much fog do we have here? Three? Iron Dots on four. You wouldn't want to hurt us, would you? My prescription is a bit of blood letting. Nice. It's on six. They play pretty aggressive, man. And we still got out of the round? <laughs> I don't know. Don't know how they're feeling. Yeah, definitely got to bleed. Man, you smashed me yesterday, dude. <laughs> I had no chance. Doe's an expert gamer. <laughs> I know. Uh, hold on. Dagoon's in the transform stage, right? <laughs> they can't kill it though. Can they? Oh wait. How many is that spawn? Because in Slave 6 it's more. Right, that's why. So they can do 8 points of damage with the Slave 6. Hey, what's up, Sake? Oh, no, not this one. Bruh. Bro. Bro. I shall reserve judgment. Try out the new SY card later. Which one? I need not spill blood to make you suffer like never before. In Germany, we call it Os Osbalan Sert. 
<laughs> I got no idea how to pronounce that, man. But appreciate the input. Thank you. So I want to pull. No, we don't want to pull the toad out, do we? The unit. Ah, uh, St. Gregory, the Fire Sworn card. <laughs> no worries, Sunrise, I got you. <laughs> um, did you see my deck guide on it? Jammo Flammo? I had no losses. 10 and 0. It's no joke. Short round Della 5 Vampire. Toad Prince. Can it do it for us? Aaron Diet. Yeah, you should check it out. Check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, see how Lemon just shared the link there? Click on it. Um on the video it's the thumbnail is just my win streak. It's all green. What's the best premium for Syndicate? St. Gregory looks pretty sick. And probably makes sense because you're just playing him now too. Yeah, yeah, check it out. 10 and 0 win streak. Why? Why? I have the answers! Okay, we got this, but... This is the whole reason I got him in here. I can still purify him. They may greed the charges. Because the pillar's not huge. Oh, that's just cheating. That's cheating. Absolute cheat. What the hell? Huh? Okay. So you're a Deathwish player now. I don't want to consume that, man. I also don't really want to trigger this. Give me dead laugh. Give me dead laugh.
Really? <laughs> oh, come on, man. We're going to get Brewess. Yes. An abandoned girl? How could that possibly be? No such thing. We shall protect you. Can't let that happen. Can't have that happening out here. That's it, she's gone. See? All fixed. No longer abandoned. She's well fed now, she's got an apple. See? It's all good. Growing up in two seconds. <laughs> Do you think a bio would be... Like, how would you like to use it? Triggered Dagoon or Bruess with it. Interesting. Never even thought about that. <laughs> okay, that'd be a pretty sick idea, actually, man. Give it a go. Let me know how it, how it works out. The only thing is, um, as you can see, the card gets answered a lot, you know. Yeah, I'm Bruess. Yeah. How does it hold up against raids though, Lemon? Must be really tough, huh? That's the thing, those kinds of decks, they suffer. We got one toad in there. We need to find Haunt. Really? Train not ignorant. Remember to whom you speak. Wow. Simless harvest. Elven land, Dwarf, upon which your kind dies. Let's just see if they really play into this. Actually, this. Better. They might be just thinning and going a long round, or... What on earth have we run into? Could just be like a trap in there just to give him some control. <clears throat> oh man, it's really hard to say. Um... I 
I guess I start playing my combo. I don't really have to worry about control from them anyway though, do I? Oh, we've got to get a haunt here, we need points. We'll just protect our units. That's nice to hear. Two rebukes. Interesting. There's a great deal to be made. Ah, oh, man. Um. <laughs> oh, crap. We can kill now. Yeah, that's the problem now though.
sorry, I am. I just know I promise. You wouldn't want to take care of that, would you? I haven't really had the chance to um, see it in its full potential. I've been getting answered a lot, to be honest. Hard to, hard to tell you exactly. Wow, it's a draw. <sighs> uh... That could be pretty good against some of the roadlocked units. Go on first. Hmm. Yep. We can move it this way. So they can't utilize it for the double boost at least. Yeah, what's up Shui, how are you? Okay, that's a bit slow. Better for us because we're playing Arendite. I'm sure they are too. A Neuromancy. Maybe we get rid of. Oh, probably AA's. Yeah. AA's uh, good points. Knight Errant. I say raids is probably like tier one, honestly. It's gonna get a massive tall if I do this. I don't know if they got something for this. Ha 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 ha. 
Let's see what they got. Could be risky. I also want to win round one. Okay. Maybe pass. They got us back. Maybe they tried to 2-0 us. Okay. And we probably need these cards. Activators for Haunt. Pella for Vandergrift. Uh, what's that card's name? Maiden Shield. It's gonna go really tall. Oh, they might they might pass. I don't know. We didn't win. Oh, now we won. Probably not as necessary now. Wow, we got a long round? I don't think I've really had a long round yet with this deck. Now we get Detlaf, Arendite, Toad. Kind of need to consume maybe as well. Double leader. Yeah. Wow, we got a lot of time to make this work. This is going to be like a greedy battle. they use so far? Let's see what they want to do. Is that counter three? Spawning storm. That's just um... So is this just like a bad draw in this round? Wow, it's gonna make it. Okay. Yeah, you see? If it, it forces them to have to choose, you know? Which is kinda good in some cases for us.
Squire. Just stay ahead on points to deny their Aaron died, I guess. This gets hit. We can Aaron died that. We got a massive spores here. Nice. Taking knights out in a long round? It's quite good. <laughs> 